What's going on, Bears fans? We've got some news and rumors to get into in just a few moments. But first, if you're a diehard fan, don't be one of those fans that taps out after a three and five start. Some of these fan bases across the league, you know, you get onto the West Coast, uh, you know, well, at least it's 70 degrees every day. I'm not going to watch my team that's two and six anymore. That's not Chicago. Like this video if you are a diehard Bears fan and if you are not going anywhere. Hell, I want to get over a thousand likes on today's show. And if we don't, I'll kind of be d disappointed in you guys and this fan base. So hit that thumbs up icon. And with that being said, let's jump on into today's show. What's going on, guys? Harrison Graham here with another edition of Chicago Bears. Now, the latest news and rumors, really three headlines to get into uh, on today's episode. Not a ton of graphics. I've been busy all week, tons of uh, assignments here at Chat Sports. So I'm just mostly going to be talking to you guys. You guys have probably been wondering, what the hell is going on with the head coach, Matt Nagy? Well, we'll start there. He is back at Hallis Hall after missing last week and last week's game with COVID-19. He met with the media today uh, in person, not over Zoom. So he has been cleared, said he was cleared from COVID protocols on Tuesday. So he missed the game by a couple of days. Of course, was holding out hope to coach against San Francisco. That did not end up being the case. So the Bears do have their head coach back in the building as they prepare for Monday Night Football against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you know, look, regardless of what we think about Nagy, that's probably a good thing, right? You don't want to be, you know, bouncing around from Nagy to Chris Tabor unless, you know, they decide to make a midseason change at some point, which we'll ask you guys momentarily about that. But let's be honest, upcoming schedule at 3-5 and five at Pittsburgh Monday Night Football, not going to be easy. It's a winnable game, but it's on the road. Then you got the bye week, but then you got Baltimore at home at Detroit that you should win, but then the Cardinals as well. Let's be crystal clear here. If you're Matt Nagy, you can't go into the bye week three and six. You've got to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers here on Monday night. It's as simple as that. You go, you lose that game, and especially if it's very ugly, it wouldn't shock me if the Bears did make a midseason change. I know they haven't done that. I know that's not how the McCaskies have done things in the past, but if they go to Pittsburgh, say they lose by two touchdowns and the offense doesn't do a damn thing, this fan base, you guys, are going to be calling for Matt Nagy's head. And honestly, I won't really blame you guys because that's what I did after the Browns game, and I haven't really shifted that much since that time. Three straight losses, that would be a fourth straight loss if you lose on Monday night. Be honest with me. Do you guys want Matt Nagy fired? We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. If you do, type a Y for yes. If you don't, type an N for no. If you get hit with the YouTube ad break, scroll on down to the pinned comment and reply with a simple Y or an N. Storyline number two here on Thursday on Chicago Bears. Now, David Montgomery injury update. He has been, uh, what, what's the official term? Designated to return from IR. So his 21-day window uh, starts today. He will be at practice in some capacity. We will see uh, if he's a full participant, limited. I don't know if he will play on Monday against Pittsburgh, but... The timing is curious, and I do kind of think he has a chance to because why would you do this now if he didn't have a chance with the bye week coming next week, right? Bears tweeted this out. Of course, Nagy announced it that uh, David Montgomery will return to, return to practice today, opening a 21-day window for his activation from injured reserve. Uh, so I would say there's at least a chance he plays on Monday night. Obviously, Khalil Herbert has ran the ball really well. Uh, let's be honest, man. Monty ver plus Herbert – that kind of feels like a slightly poor man's of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt to me with the way Monty was running before he got hurt and with the way uh, Khalil Herbert has been playing as well. He's been an excellent fill-in, the rookie out of Virginia Tech. I think this can be one of the more dynamic duos at running back in the National Football League. Montgomery uh, was having a great start to the season before he got banged up, I believe, in that early on in that Vegas game or maybe it was the game before. I can't quite remember now, uh, but he's been, been out for about four weeks. Now he potentially returns, if not this week than for sure after the bye week. Obviously, Herbert, does he slide back to RB2? I definitely think uh, he is ahead of Damian Williams in the pecking order at this point in time. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but I'm excited to get Monty back. I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, I'll keep riding the hot hand, Khalil Herbert. Monty is still, you know, a very valuable player on this piece. Hey, there's never bad news when guys get healthy. There's no doubt about that. But I'll ask you guys, who should be RB1? Type DM for David Montgomery. Type KH for Khalil Herbert. 
I think it should be Montgomery. I'm not going to overreact to Khalil Herbert having a nice three or four weeks here, although he's been great and deserves a role in this offense. I will be clear about that. I do think David Montgomery, uh, when healthy, is your number one running back. But I'll let you guys decide, DM or KH. BetUS powering today's show here on Chicago Bears Now, and we love BetUS because they are the number, number one sportsbook partner in the game. Go make some money at chatsports.com slash bears. Use the promo code BEARDOWN. You put down 100 bucks, you'll get 125 for free with that 125% deposit bonus. Another low-scoring affair is what Vegas believes this week. Only 40 points, the total over-under. That was the same as last week against the 49ers, and that got blown off the door because uh, it was uh, – 33 to 22. Steelers six and a half point favorites. That feels a little high to me. This Pittsburgh offense isn't that great. Um, my gut is telling me to bet the over, but this is probably a get right game for the Bears defense as well after a pretty disappointing game last week. So if you feel like putting your money on this game, chatsports.com slash Bears promo code Bear Down. There's always uh, other NFL games, of course, to bet on as well. All right, number three story, then we'll get out of here. Any interest in Odell Beckham Jr.? He's still with the Browns. Obviously, the trade that deadline is passed. So it wouldn't be via trade, but tons of reports coming out right now. Uh, my producer today, Matthew Peterson, hosts the Browns report here at Chat Sports, and uh, the drama is hot and heavy there, and it sounds like a breakup could be imminent, that uh, uh, he could be gone at some point. I think there's a good chance he'll get cut. He's been sent home. Uh, he was sent home from practice yesterday. He's not at practice today, so the organization seems to be trying to decide what to do. OBJ's dad tweeted out a video of uh, Baker Mayfield uh, not finding OBJ when he's wide open and stuff like that, so that seems to have created some friction as well. I'm not sure why the Browns didn't just trade him. They had offers. Now, they probably weren't good offers, but – they might just end up cutting him anyway. A lot of drama there. So, naturally, I'm like, okay, I'll talk about this on Chicago Bears now. Would you guys have interest? I'll ask you, would you sign OBJ if he got cut? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Obviously, we are talent, uh, talking about a very talented receiver, even though he hasn't been that true alpha – uh, alpha male the last couple of seasons with Cleveland. Give me an S or give me a P for pass. I don't think the Bears really make sense for OBJ. Number one, they didn't trade Allen Robinson, so you have him and Darnell Mooney. Are you going to make Mooney your slot receiver? I guess you could do that. Could you put OBJ in the slot? Perhaps, but I think more so it doesn't make sense for OBJ. Like if he gets cut, don't you think he's going to go sign with a major contributor or ma major contender? The Rams, uh, Kansas City, the Raiders need a re receiver now. Plus, OBJ's big gripe once he got traded to Cleveland was that he had to go live in Cleveland. I think he Chicago's a big, nice city, but I think if he could go to a place like Vegas, he would definitely uh, be open to doing something like that. So I don't really think the Bears make sense, and that's mostly from OBJ's side, side at the end of the day. Uh, from the Bears' side, I mean, OBJ hasn't been the same guy since going to Cleveland, guys. Injuries have certainly popped up, but in half the games, he's got about 30% of the production, 25% of the production overall, especially at touchdowns. I mean, 44-7, to seven, that's just not even close. We were talking about this guy's going to be a surefire Hall of Famer uh, based on what he was doing with the Giants, and now all of a sudden you're like, well, he's got a lot more work to do if he's going to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame someday. So, Sure, like, I'm not saying I'd have no interest. I'm just saying I think realistically he would probably end up signing with a bigger contender than a team like the Bears that, sure, isn't completely out of the playoff hunt, but obviously is going to have to get things going very, very soon. Appreciate you guys for tuning in to today's show. Quick ask, we're almost at 36,000 subs, less than 200 away. I think we can get there with your help. So hit that big red button and subscribe, and uh, we will be live for Monday Night Football for a Bears versus Steelers watch party. One or two videos between now and then as well. Hit that big red button, and we'll see you guys soon.